Welcome to the wide world of esports, the show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today, our topic is esports on the ninth island, Las mm -hmm. Vegas casinos, betting, and events. My guest is Seth Shore, the CEO of Better View. Welcome, Seth. Uh, thank you for having me today. It's good to be here. Okay, you know, I know that all the viewers are excited to watch this today because we always want to know what's going on in Vegas. Yeah, Vegas and Hawaii, very, very uh, synergistic, popular destinations. We, we love our Hawaiian tourists. And of course, as Las Vegans, we love visiting Hawaii. Right. And you know, the first time that I was aware of esports in Vegas, I was staying at the Luxor Hotel and you know, when I saw their arena there. And so, you know, it's really exciting. So what is going on in uh, esports in Vegas right now? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, there's no doubt that the esports arena at Luxor is one of the preeminent uh, esports facilities, something that I think the esports community is very proud of uh, and MGM Resorts and uh, HyperX, uh, uh, did, did a great job, or Allied Esports rather, did a great job creating the HyperX Arena. Um, but the history of esports in Las Vegas, uh, of course, goes back much further. Uh, from a local uh, community perspective, uh, there's been a growing esports uh, community that goes back 10 or 15 years. From an industry perspective, you know, what I mean by that is the Las Vegas casino and tourist industry embracing esports as a part of our strategy and offering. Um, it goes back about six or seven years now. Um, I'm you know, very uh, proud to say uh, it, it originated uh, in downtown Las Vegas, which is technically the Ninth Island. Uh, we refer to it as the Ninth Island. Um, uh, at the Downtown Grand, we were the uh, first casino to introduce uh, esports uh, to the casino environment. All right. So tell us what your role is in Vegas. Uh, sure. So. My uh, main background is in casino and hospitality. So I am the CEO of Fifth Street Gaming. We uh, own and operate casinos and restaurants and hotels in Las Vegas. Uh, that's something that I've, I've done for quite a long time, been in the industry for, for 25 plus years. Um, about seven years ago, uh, actually by being introduced to esports, uh, we started to also look at innovative technologies around the gaming space, which will help us introduce Las Vegas to a new generation of gamer and really enhance the brick and mortar facility. So that's you know, what we were really attracted to when it came to uh, esports. And that's been a big focus of our company ever since. So the target market for Vegas, I mean, let's talk about the market. Who who is actually going there and who are you trying to attract? Um, well, I think that's the, from a general perspective, you know, Las Vegas uh, attracts all different types of people, of course, we're right? an international uh, destination. I think the idea around esports attracting, you know, the millennial generation, Gen X, Gen Z, Gen Z rather, um, that is what's attractive to uh, Las Vegas uh, casino operators. You know, there's a school of thought that casino customers are uh, getting older, that a lot of young uh, patrons uh, are not necessarily attracted to slot machines, and at least they want to have uh, an element of skill uh, during their gambling um, and incorporating esports gaming culture into our Las Vegas experience uh, is intended to just tap into another uh, demographic. Um, that's the general idea. Uh, we've been successful in some ways. Uh, others, uh, we've had a lot of uh, learnings over the years. Um, I actually, uh, probably the best example of a significant esports uh, experience that uh, we were working on that didn't quite come to fruition, but I still think is a great example of a Las Vegas only esports experience was a festival called Metarama. Uh, this goes back to about 2018, 2019, uh, when we partnered with some of the biggest uh, festival producers in the world and uh, one of the largest uh, casino operators, MGM, 
uh, to create a first of its kind gaming, esports, music festival. Um, and it was, you know, I, I look, looking back, uh, we curated a, an amazing uh, talent of musicians and gamers, all of your uh, A-list uh, esports celebrities. We had a Blizzard and, and Riot involved. Um, unfortunately, a uh, combination of marketing and ultimately COVID, you know, didn't allow us to uh, execute on that festival, but I know it's something we'll be looking at doing again and just the type of experience that uh, I think one would expect only in Las Vegas. Are the uh, publisher, are the game publishers um, anxious to get in to casinos? Um, I'm kind of curious about that. I think it's a great, it's a great question. Um, I would be hesitant to lump all publishers together. Uh, I think different publishers have different uh, perspectives when it comes to Las Vegas and, and, and what Las Vegas uh, means to different people. Um, let's just say, I think, you know, Valve might be on one spectrum and Nintendo on the other spectrum and, you know, certainly many uh, in between. Um, I do think that I could speak to most of the publishers that are heavily focused on esports. And let's just say the publishers that organize and operate their own leagues. And, and you know, any, anybody familiar with esports think knows who they are. Um, I know that they see Las Vegas as a great destination um, because the Las Vegas franchise uh, for some of the biggest esport leagues are being held back uh, for the right time and the right opportunity. Not because they think Las Vegas isn't a great destination, but because they think it's such a good destination, it needs to be done right. Um, oh. Which quite frankly is very similar to the way that traditional stick and ball sports see Las Vegas. Once people got past the stigma of Las Vegas being a gambling town, an adults only town, which I think it's safe to say we're now past that. Um, and once sports betting became more or less accepted across the country, you can now uh, bet on sports in at least 50% of the United States. Well, then all of a sudden Las Vegas becomes the ideal place for professional sports. Las Vegas has a growing community, over 2 million people. So we're one of the largest cities you know, without an NBA team. We now have an NFL team, of course, and an NHL team all brand new, right? Didn't have either one just you know, three years ago. But the idea is not only to tap into a growing local community of 2 million people, um, but our tourists, right? So theoretically, the best place to watch a professional sports match if you're from another city is your hometown and then doing the Las Vegas game. So I think that's why uh, sports are becoming so popular in Las Vegas and that is no different uh, for esports. Sure. And what, actually, what games have you actually seen in casinos that are classified as esports games? Uh, sure. So I, um, uh, from about 2016 to 2018, in, in one of my casinos, the Downtown Grand, we operated uh, approximately 300 esports tournaments on the casino floor, um, all different levels. Uh, these were you know, not professional tournaments, tournaments that people could uh, enter some had qualifiers, uh, some, some didn't. Uh, and they uh, went across the spectrum of game genre. What was pretty, pretty interesting from my perspective as a hospitality operator is we saw the data in terms of what games and what game genre brought different types of people, different age groups, and saw a different spend uh, you know, at, the, at the bar, right? And, and, and we are a casino, so we, we did focus on a 21 and over uh, crowd. Uh, but we saw a dramatic difference. Um, let's just say the, the FIFA audience uh, was, you know, an exciting, rowdy audience that uh, had a big uh, European presence. They all wore their jerseys. They came in and it was a completely social, fun environment. We had other, you know, and, and played on a console. We had other games um, that were, you know, PC games where you had people on their headsets um, playing in a land center, you know, much like the one that it looks like you're in today. Uh, and it was a little less social, right? It, it was different. Um, still exciting, right? Uh, and so we learned a lot in terms of the game genre, whether it's played on a console or a PC, whether it's a single individual uh, a, a game or you know a five-person team game. 
Um, those were all very different and they created different experiences, which is important because at the end of the day, that was my goal was to create an experience. If you're just looking to play esports, go online. You can do that all day long. You can play a million ways to play uh, 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 competitive video games online, whether it's for fun, whether it's for money, whether it's for prizes. But when I talk about the Las Vegas experience, it's an in-person fun experience, something that you can't do at home. And that's what you know, Las Vegas is, is all about. If we're just providing the same experience you can have at home, you might as well stay at home. So it's on us to, to, to create something that's more exciting and more fun. Sure. Well, um, that really want, makes me want to go back to Vegas. Um, so tell us about Better View. Yeah, sure. So Better View was uh, born out of esports. Um, approximately uh, three and a half years ago, uh, after being in the esports space for a number of years, uh, I had many venue operators approach me and ask them to help them with their esports strategy. How do they bring gamers into their venue? Should they run tournaments or buy teams or sponsor teams? And all those are, are good tactics. But my uh, suggestion and advice was start by showing esports on your TV screen, right? So whether you're a bar, a hotel, an airport, a mall, whatever venue, are, generally there are dozens, if not hundreds of televisions that quite frankly aren't programmed very well. If you ever noticed, most of the time it's talking heads on mute. We don't do a great job, you know, except for Monday Night Football, you know, uh, using uh, and programming our TVs very well. So um, we created a commercial streaming platform that was integrated with Twitch that brought esports content uh, into venues. Um, we invented um, certain features that, quite frankly, uh, Twitch to this day, I still don't think they have, and, and, and they're they're pretty obvious. For example, uh, creating playlists or having an algorithm that says, you know, show constantly the top Fortnite streamer, right? So these were features that were very important for a venue that doesn't have somebody sitting there programming, constantly switching to the best streamer, right? So even if you put on Ninja and he stopped streaming, you know, the screen would go blank or you wouldn't know what's put on next. So we created a, a software platform um, that was more or less plug and play and allowed people to show esports um, on their TVs. Uh, over time, the platform evolved um, and you know, with the repeal of PASPA, which is the federal restriction on sports betting, um, the platform is now heavily focused on bringing sports betting content um, of which esports ultimately will be some of the uh, sports betting that we focus on as esports betting. Uh, becomes more and more popular every day. Now, before we get more into betting, let me just ask you, when you're talking about developing programming um, to stream, um, can you actually make that um, stream in guest rooms as well? Or would that be something you would do? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. So um, theoretically and technically, uh, yes, we can do that. We haven't done that yet. Um, but I think that's only a matter of time. You know, esports content, just like esports in general, it's tricky in the sense that for many years, hotel and casino operators certainly were intrigued, right? They definitely started to hear about this thing, esports, competitive gaming, that's becoming popular. You know, they're seeing their kids and nephews and, uh, you know, friends play. So they knew they had to understand what it is and potentially incorporate in their strategy, but it never quite became the priority um, that you know, I believe um, it, it should and, and, and will be. So even providing a channel uh, in a hotel room, uh, I think only certain hotels even today would understand the value. So a lot of this is about education. And quite frankly, um, a lot of my early involvement in esports was you know, being an operator, investing in teams and leagues, building arenas, stuff that I still do. But what I realized after a couple of years was the most important role I could play. And the one that no one seemed to be willing to play was being an advocate of the industry in general. And the best way to advocate something is to educate, right? Not tell people that uh, this is important and you're, you know, missing something if you don't incorporate esports. 
but helping them understand why that is true, in my opinion. Um, so about five years ago, we created the Nevada Esports Alliance, which is made up of um, all the stakeholders in Las Vegas, major casino, casino operators and owners, uh, regulators, um, the LVCVA, uh, the, you know, the, the organization that's responsible for tourism. Um, and we've spent years educating the market on esports. What is it? How do we uh, integrate it with our, into our strategies? And I think that's been very successful. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pause before I get into how that then uh, transitioned into the betting piece. Um, but that's been uh, you know, a big piece of our, big part of our journey so far. Sure. And, edu you know, educating people is very important. And that's what I try to do with this show. We've had this show since July 2020. And my intent is to educate and to allow people in the industry to present and promote what they're doing so that people who are not familiar with it can become familiar and embrace it. So now let's go to the betting piece. Is it legal to place bets on esports matches in in Las Vegas? Yeah, great question. Um, and, and, and I will try to give the shortest and most concise answer. And unfortunately, not a yes or no uh, answer. Um, but there is a path for sportsbook operators to take wagers on a professional esports match. Um, that is something that I personally educated the Nevada Gaming Control Board on roughly five years ago. The process to get a wager approved is a pretty cumbersome process where the operator has to go to the regulator and explain to them through applications and otherwise why they believe we should be able to take wagers on the finals of the you know, LCS, right? Or, or the IEM, you know, Intel Extreme Masters happened to be the first tournament uh, we did get wagers approved on. Um, so a pretty bit of a cumbersome process, uh, but one that um, we were willing to go through. Fast forward to today, or li literally a few weeks ago, and uh, we actually got the Nevada Gaming Control Board to create a subdivision of the Department of Gaming Enforcement uh, which is the Esports Technical Advisory Committee. So now that gives the regulators an in-house group of experts that can proactively say, hey, operators, we've looked at Call of Duty League, we've looked at the Overwatch League, and we're good with it. It meets the criteria. We believe in the integrity of the, of the, of the tournament and the league operators. We believe all the governing principles meets our standards. It's good. You can take wagers. And that, of course, makes it much easier for the operator. So it took us nearly five years uh, from the first wager uh, to get here. Um, and so, uh, you know, since so, so that, so now, yes, it will be legal to bet on certain esports, but also, you know, you can't just bet on sports in Nevada. You can bet on the NFL, you can bet on the NBA, you can bet on certain professional leagues that the regulators have approved. So it's the same thing with esports. I don't believe that we should allow us to bet on my son playing Fortnite against some other 12 year old, right? I mean, that's not a good idea, but the finals of Fortnite overseen by Epic and done in a way that we believe uh, is fair and uh, regulated, that should be uh, a match that um, people should be uh, safely place wagers on. Uh, that makes sense. Now, let me ask you. Um, now, my son might make the world, you know, Fortnite World Final. So, you know, if he does, then of course, bet on him. But uh, just, just for the record, I, you know, there, there is a possibility. Well, that would be fantastic, I'm sure. Um, so, <laughs> um, did the violent nature of any of the games, did that impact uh, how this moved along? Because when you're looking at professional football, professional baseball, you're looking at horse racing, those things, you don't have, you know, uh, the the killing that you see in a lot of esports games. So how did that happen? It's, it's a great question. So the quick answer is from a betting perspective, none of the regulators took that into consideration. Where that did become a factor um, was also, gosh, I think it's been four years. I'm embarrassed to tell you, um, October 1st, I think it'll be four years since the tragic October 1st shooting in Las Vegas, which still today is the country's worst mass shooting. I know, terrible for our city uh, and, our, and our country. 
um, I believe it's the fourth year anniversary. Um, and when that happened, um, within days or within a week, uh, all sorts of members of the community wanted to do something to help um, you know, the families. Um, and East, the esports community was, was no different. So we quickly put together um, a, a group of esport um, team owners, streamers, players uh, that were all willing to, to donate their time, money uh, to do a fundraiser, right? So to do a streaming fundraiser. Uh, now that's a very popular thing at the time that was still a little bit nascent, you know, a streamathon. And we were working with MGM, and the biggest problem was picking the game because that it couldn't, definitely couldn't have shooting and it really couldn't even have punching and it couldn't have blood. And so it was just so sensitive. Um, the game we landed on was a uh, rocket league. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we wanted something that was popular. That was fun. That was easy to understand. So, you know, I hate to bring up, uh, you know, some, something so sad, but in that case, uh, violence was a factor. Well, from betting, I, I don't, I don't think that's been a, been a deciding factor. Sure. And the history of boxing in Las Vegas would indicate that there's um, some reasonable expectation that there might be some violence involved in entertainment there. Yeah, look, we have a, a, we have a, a, a healthy appetite um, for anything that's done in a responsible way. And I, and I mean that seriously. Look, we're, we're a city that is built on gambling. Uh, gambling is a form of entertainment when done responsibly. It could be a terrible thing for somebody who has a problem, no different than Drinking can be a you know bad thing for an alcoholic, but thankfully you know ninety percent of people in bars drink responsibly for fun. So anything done responsibly uh, by adults, um, you know, is fine. Uh, boxing, MMA, uh, quite quite frankly, it was Nevada and the Nevada Athletic Association that took a little bit of the violence out of UFC and the MMA to make it done in a responsible way that um, was better for the athletes. So I think that's an example where there was something that was violent. We we're okay that it was violent, but let's make sure it's not too violent. Let's make sure that it's a healthy environment, uh, you know, for the athlete. So we're a we're a city that, you know, unlike maybe other cities that just says no to something, we look at saying, well, you know, how can we do this in 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 the right way? Um, which is why, you know, when it comes to esports betting, I'm very comfortable that our state. And our regulators want to work with the operators to figure out how can we incorporate this new type of sport. Um, let's not just say no because optically someone might draw the conclusion that more young people watch esports. Well, you know, twelve-year-olds watch the NBA. That doesn't stop us from betting on it. It just we need to trust that people who are taking wagers know their customer, know the age of their customer make sure everyone's following the law. We're really good at that here in Las Vegas. So that's why I'm so confident in our ability to incorporate video games uh, into our experience. So what are the, uh, some of the biggest esports events that you've had and, and what, is it, what uh, events are you looking forward to in the future? Yeah, great. I mean, Las Vegas has had the major events um, at my uh, uh, casino, we had uh, the uh, finals, uh, uh, World of Tanks finals a couple of years ago. That was, that was a really big deal. Uh, at Mandalay Bay, we've had uh, um, an LCS uh, the seasonal finals. Um, you know, we have Evo every year, which is by far the largest uh, fighting game tournament um, by far. Uh, so there's been a lot of great in-person events. Um, you know, sadly, all of that stopped uh, last year. And, and even this year, it's been slow to ramp up. We, you know, we've had very strict social distancing measures up until July 1st of this year. Um, so, you know, sadly for esports, which was so nascent and, and on the rise, we're starting to see traction 2018, 19, 20 and 21 has been, you know, there's been nothing. Um, the Nevada Esports Alliance that I mentioned earlier is working with the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority to look at the 2022 schedule and see how we can bring major tournaments uh, to Las Vegas. So, uh, to, you know, stay tuned on, uh, on that one. So is it safe for us to go to Las Vegas right now? What are your thoughts? You, 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 you bet. Uh, look, 
unless you're uh, you know, planning on never leaving your house, which is probably the safest thing, uh, Las Vegas uh, is, is, is the safest place to visit and has been uh, since the pandemic started. We, as I mentioned earlier, we are an industry, the casino industry, that is built on regulations and providing safe, clean, and secure environments for our guests. It was not a challenge for us to make sure people were social distancing or wore masks. We're, it, we're used to dealing with making sure people don't drink too much or gamble underage or launder money. So, you know, making sure you wear a mask, that, 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 was, that was easy. And, and we, uh, we, we are very proud uh, of the fact that we um, have provided a, a safe environment for people uh, since, since COVID. And we will continue uh, as we get out of this thing. All right. And what do you think the future of esports is going to be in your state? Yeah. So I, I think it's a combination of what's in our state. The other thing that did change this really accelerated last year was mobile sports betting has become very, very popular. So we are starting to incorporate um, mobile betting opportunities within uh, sports betting apps. Uh, so I do see um, you know, a lot more esports betting. Um, I do see casinos incorporating video game culture into their experience. That, that's the other thing when it comes to education. E, well, esports is, you know, certainly um, defined and, and, and mostly specific to the games that, that, that you and I know. You know, video game culture is a much wider net. And having, you know, a Candy Crush tournament, there, there's, you know, there are ways of incorporating social mobile games and casting a net to the wider gaming audience and, and maybe not just focusing on, you know, the fan of League of Legends. So I think casinos are starting to understand that and starting to get a better understanding of, of, of uh, what that gamer culture is looking for and how, why Las Vegas is a great place to provide um, a really unique and fun experience for them. If someone wants to learn more about Better View or Fifth Street Gaming, um, where do they go? I'll, I'll make it easy. Go to uh, SethShore.com. Uh, that, that is my name, Seth, SethShore.com. And we talk about all of our businesses. Um, and uh, there's a, a uh, way to message me directly, uh, whether through email or LinkedIn. And um, love talking to people who are interested in Las Vegas, gambling, esports, technology, innovation, uh, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, always uh, open to having a chat. So look, look forward to hearing, to hearing from uh, any of your viewers. All right. Thank you, Seth. We appreciate you being on the show and look forward to seeing you in Vegas. I hope so. Thanks for having me. All right. So thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Heather Blair of the Cinema Esports Alliance. See you then.